Hi, Science 20 is I'm going to walk you through how to get started with your Unit C Geology major project. So here I am in Google Classroom. I'm signed in kind of in a test account, so it should look like what a student would see. So I'm going to go into my Science 20 class, and you're going to see here at the top of your feed the assignment hosted, Unit C Geology project. You can also kind of go into classwork there and see it as well. I'm going to click on that, and here's the basic sorts of instructions for the assignment. Uh, it does take the place of your unit C geology exam, so it's a big chunk of your grades. Uh, if you have any questions, email me right away, and I would be very happy to help you out. When you're done, uh, you're going to click on this Mark as Done button, and you're going to upload your file here, uh, this Add or Create button. You will be working on this project independently, not in a group, so please make sure that you are doing it on your own, and your deadline is Wednesday, May 27th. Now, in order to get started, you're going to click on this Science 20 Geology Project, and you're going to get a Google Doc opening up with all the instructions in it. You're also going to see a spot here for your name and a video link, and you'll see why that is in a moment. Uh, so in this project, you're going to make a model of a famous fault line, and then you're going to make a short video explaining your model. Here are the instructions. Step one, choose one of the three fault lines below. Now, I have an example that I'm going to show you of a little sample project that I made. I didn't pick one of these three because I didn't want to sort of give away the answers, but you can choose from any one of these three faults. They're all in North America, which is sort of nice. Once you've chosen one of the three fault lines, and you might want to read up a little bit on each of those first to see which one is most interesting to you, you're going to build a model. Now, the model doesn't have to be super fancy. It can just be on a piece of paper, with a drawing, some colors. We'll look at some examples here in a second. In your model, you need to show me relatively where it is. All right, I don't need like latitude and longitude, but like what country is it in? Is it close to a province or a city or a state or something like that? I'd like you to show me which way the fault moves. So does one plate go underneath of another? Does the, do the plates go side to side? Do they move away from each other? We kind of learned about those different ways that tectonic plates move in the earthquake notes. Which, if you're sort of like, oh, I don't remember those earthquake notes, back here in the Google Classroom, I did include those in a PDF as well. So you can go and check those again if you can't remember the different ways earthquakes move. Your diagram should also have other major geographic features near your fault, like maybe there's an ocean nearby, or a mountain range, or a desert, or a big lake, or a river, or something that sort of says, okay, this is where on earth it is. Now, once you've got your model made, you're going to shoot a short video uh, explaining your model, and you're going to answer these seven questions. You're going to answer what the name of your fault is and where it's located. Uh, what layer of the earth makes up the fault? If you're not sure about that, again, check those notes. What are the names of the tectonic plates that make up the fault? Uh, and a little bit of Googling can really help you with that, or there's also a diagram in the notes that can help you work that out. Uh, can you show the way the fault moves? then actually move your model physically so you can see that movement of the two plates. Uh, what type of fault is it? Is it a subduction fault, a strike slip fault, a normal fault, whatever the case may be? When was the last earthquake at this fault? Where was the epicenter of that earthquake? And what was the Richter magnitude of the earthquake? And a lot of times a little Googling will help you with that. You'll have to do a little bit of research, but I've researched each of these three fault lines and those things pop up without too much effort and too much research. And lastly, you're going to talk a little bit about how humans are impacted by this fault. Okay, what does life look like if you live along that fault? What kind of steps do you have to take to prepare for future earthquakes? Your video is going to answer those seven questions. Of course, when you've got that done, you're going to turn in this Google Doc uh, by clicking that turn in button. Okay, a couple of notes. Don't get discouraged if you're like, oh man, I don't have lots of materials at my house. Uh, and I'm not very artistic, how can I make a model? It is okay just to do it even on a piece of paper. You'll see my example in a second, that's what I did, um, with a couple of colors to sort of show the different plates or mountain ranges or oceans or something like that. You can though get more creative if you have some materials at home and you'd like to do something out of some you know, physical sorts of objects to make up the fault line, that is fine too. Criteria for your video, try to keep it less than five minutes. I do have to watch a lot of these, so it's nice if they're not too long. Uh, make sure your video shows the movement of the fault line and some close-ups maybe of the locations so I can see, you know, the cities nearby or the states and some of those geographic features. Don't make it so far off that I can't read it in your video. And you will need to verbally answer all of those seven questions. You do have to do a little bit of speaking here. 
how do you get your video to me? There's a few different ways. You can upload your video on YouTube. And then once you've got that video uploaded on YouTube, you can just go at, into this Google Doc and you can just paste that video link right here. And I can click on the video link and I can watch it. And it's not hard to make a video uh, private on YouTube so that nobody else can see it if that's what you choose. Another way you can go through and do this is you can go and upload the video to your Google Drive. And I'll show some examples of how to do that. It's not super hard. Just make sure your permissions are set so I can view your video, all right? So if you set your permissions so that it's private, then even if you hand it in, I can't see it. So make sure that I can see your video. Or if you've got some other method, that's fine. Send me an email and we can work that out. There's a rubric posted here in the Google Classroom that explains how you're gonna be marked. So you can look at that to see what sorts of things you wanna make sure you have in your project. If you don't have access to technology to make a video, send me an email and we'll figure something out. Privacy concerns, don't worry. I'm not showing anyone in these videos other than me. And a couple of tips. If you're using a smartphone, I'm sure lots of you are, film in landscape. That's sort of the uh, view that's a little wider when you turn your phone on the side. That looks a lot better on a monitor. And if you're uploading to YouTube and you wanna do some editing, maybe you had a few mistakes you wanted to cut out, there is a nice little editing service called YouTube Studio. Uh, and I've included a video here in the description that shows how to use that. It's pretty easy and you can do some simple little edits in it. Once your video is uploaded, you are going to put the link either for your YouTube uh, link or your Google um, Drive link in here. Put your name in and then you're going to go in and mark it as done. You can also add your video here if you have it as a Google Drive uh, link already, and I can see it that way as well. Add any comments in that you want to, and then I'll be able to mark this. Now, if you have any other questions about your video or the project in general, please make sure you ask. The due date is May 27th. Have fun. All right, this is a example of what your diagram model can look like for your unit C project. I chose a fault which you cannot choose. I chose the Hayward fault, which was not one of the examples I gave you, but I wanted to show you one um, that would be similar to the ones you're doing, but just not exactly the same. So the Hayward fault is located in California. Uh, it is um, sort of just to the east of the city of Berkeley and to the city of Oakland and a little bit east and a little bit north of the city of San Jose as well. It is made up of the, like all faults, the lithosphere, that's the crust, which has been cracked and uh, is forming the boundary between these two plates. Uh, you can see the movement of this plate. And what I've decided to do here is just make my diagram and then cut it along the fault line. Um, so what happens here is it moves like this. All right, so during an earthquake, and actually it happens all the time, just really, really slowly, but it happens quickly during an earthquake, we get movement like this. So this plate, which is the Pacific plate, uh, mostly out in the ocean, but also part of California, moves northwest, while at the same time, the North American plate moves southeast. And so that's the movement of that uh, boundary of this fault line. Uh, this is called a strike-slip earthquake, when we get the two sides moving uh, kind of side to side compared to one, one another. The last earthquake that occurred along the Hayward Fault was in 1868. Uh, it was somewhere between a 6.5 and a 7.1 on the Richter scale. Because it was in 1868 and they didn't have the scale then, they don't know exactly for sure, but that's based on predictions. Uh, the epicenter was in a really small town called Hayward, California, um, which was just past uh, Oakland and uh, San Jose, so that's where it gets its name. Uh, about 30 people died in that earthquake, and uh, several buildings in San Jose and San Francisco uh, collapsed as a result of it. Uh, the impact on people, um, the, another earthquake, if it was to happen along the Hayward Fault Line, where there is a lot of industry, there's a lot of cities and infrastructure, uh, it would affect the Bay Area water supply. There's a ton of cities down here, and uh, they um, have pipes transporting water. Of course, it would affect that, so people would be without water. Uh, there is oil and gas pipelines running through here that would be disrupted. Uh, there are a lot of bridges in the Bay Area, including the really famous San Francisco uh, Bridge, uh, which would be affected, and uh, highways and rail systems as well that would be down.
And slowly people are starting to retrofit um, bridges and buildings and things like that to try to prevent them against earthquakes. So this is what your project could look like. Those are the seven questions that I've answered that you're going to answer as well from your project. You can do a diagram, you can do something more complicated, whatever you feel is best.